And you're welcome back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. Final hour here, final segment actually. On SME Today, we are joined by Victor OMIA, co-founder of Checker. Now, Checker is a digital platform that helps people book lab tests and also health checks from the comfort of their homes with at-home samples, collections, and also digital results sent within 24 to 48 hours. Now, he's also the founder and CEO of Medipal Healthcare, the parent company of Checka. You are welcome, Mr. MIA. Thank you very much. First of all, your name is uh, neither here or there. Or where are you from exactly? Um, I'm from Undo State. Undo State. Kale, to be precise. Oh, okay. I think I passed through there yesterday on oh, my nice. way back <laughs> from uh, Ogbomo Shore. So oh. I, I like to travel a lot. So I like to make sure that I know where everybody's from and stuff like that. Oh, Interesting. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Now, your background is in economics. Yeah. But you've been in the healthcare sector for the past three years. So first off, how, do we, how did we do that? Where did we make that jump? Were okay. you in the <laughs> economic part of the healthcare sector initially? Yeah. Okay, so I wasn't in the economic part of the healthcare mm -hmm. sector initially. I... Um, I took ill while I was in 200 level okay. in the university, started from there, and um, I went to the university health center, met hundreds of students, and it got to my turn, they couldn't find my medical records. And pretty much what I just did was to look for um, a way to um, prefer solution to that, because I almost lost my life. I, um, it got to a level where, what mostly, I could not get medications from there, so I went back home and self-medicated, took the wrong medication. Oh, wow. And I almost died. So oh, just geez. recovering from that, mm -hmm. by the grace of God, I just knew that so many people will be going through this Same problem, thing. not just in tertiary institutions, but of course out there. Yeah. A lot of hospitals, but looking at 200 million Nigerians, how many hospitals do we have that could cater for mm -hmm. the need? So the need for digital healthcare just came to my mind. And I knew that while I was studying economics, there's more to what mm -hmm. I was um, willing to do. I could have gone into data analysis, yeah. or project management, or different fields, but I knew that it was healthcare. So mm -hmm. I... I did not take it on as soon as I finished university. Mm -hmm. I went into the development sector, worked at, as a fundraising and partnership coordinator, did business development here and there. But yet my purpose kept calling me. Yeah. One day I just said I was going to start this and I developed the software with my team, got my co-founder, and pretty much from there I started winning grants, nice. talking about what we're doing, sharing the story of how we've helped hundreds and thousands of people access care across different hospitals in three states. So when we started Medipal, it was like, okay, it was small. Okay. But we just looked at how we could um, scale that small solution, digital healthcare for hospitals, helping them build electronic medical records nice. for their patients such that their patients could access care even without that small card. Yeah. Um, so that, that's how we really started. Oh, 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 am I, if I let you keep going, you're not going to stop. So <laughs> let, me, let me push in a few thoughts and questions in there. First of all, explain to us exactly how it works. Okay. So uh, for Medipal, uh, Medipal is an electronic medical record solution, mm -hmm. right, that helps patients access care. So it digitizes the um, hospital operation. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to go to the hospital with my card and wait in line until yes. the light comes on. Boom! It's your turn to go see it. I can do all of that from your, my yes, phone? Yes, you can book an appointment. Book an appointment. You get to the hospital. You just mention your name. And they then type you go out straight your card. In. Yes. Okay. They type out your details. Send your file to the doctor. The mm -hmm. doctor looks up your entire history even mm -hmm. before you get in. Okay. Once the doctor is done typing the entire um, medical history and what exactly is wrong yeah. with you, at that point, once it submits, the entire records from prescription to lab um, um, requests, mm -hmm. everything goes to the different departments, nice. even to the finance department. Wow. But ordinarily, you will just You'd have to go to each of those departments yes, yourself. Yes, but with our solution, they already have your details. It just makes it seamless. So you just go there, your, your um, receipt is ready, mm -hmm. you make payment, and you're out in the shortest time possible. So what we're thinking about is how we could reduce waiting time from about yeah. three hours to as short as 30 minutes. Oh, that's brilliant. That's so pretty much, fantastic. Yeah. And we've been able to do that across 40 hospitals in three states. Oh, Lagos, incredible. Um, or your state and Ogun state. Now, I, I want to talk about that story there where you actually, it was your instance that actually pushed you into thinking of developing a solution. And then when you were talking, I picked out something you said. You said you, it was still waiting for you and you knew that you could. He said, I could make a difference. And I was like, that's passion speaking right there. Yeah. Now, there are many people who find themselves in sectors where they don't belong, where there's a passion outside of that sector that they haven't absolutely explored and um, it's, it's our loss because there's so much they could do that they don't do. True. Um, but there's also the fear of not succeeding when you move, when you take that jump. Now, in your case, how did you, let's say, um, how did you overcome that fear? It was a, it was a very huge um, decision to make, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, 
Um, fortunately, at the time, I got a job with a German firm. Okay. It was between taking a job that would pay me lots of money mm -hmm. and following my dreams. I was okay. about leaving that company. And I, I just thought about it. I prayed about it. And I was sure that I was going to make more from solving people's problems than okay. working under someone. Let's, so let, let's talk about the econ economics of it now. Let's come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, how does Medicare make money? And how much would it cost the average user? Okay, so I would, I would like to talk about Checker there. Okay, go ahead. Right? Um, um, because after doing that as Medipal, we mm -hmm. knew, I knew that art mostly... You needed was, another solution to back yes, that up. Yes, we did another solution. So off our heads, we're trying to create um, an ecosystem. So we, we started digitizing hospitals. I mean, it doesn't end there. The mm -hmm. engine of um, so many hospitals is diagnostics. Yeah. Like, the doctors will not be able to tell you what is wrong unless there's a solid diagnostic. Diagnostics, yeah. Um, structure in place. And uh, when you look at the number of hospitals that we have and the number of labs that we have, I mean, quality labs. And the labs are overwhelmed themselves. Uh, yeah. So even the labs are more overwhelmed than, than the, hospitals. the hospitals. So that's a very big problem. It started from when my mom had stroke. And wow. I was like, I cannot be in the healthcare system. And I can't and, do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom will have stroke and there's nothing that I could do about it. From going to seven different hospitals without getting, um, mm. getting admitted to Going to the lab, when the doctor said, oh, we need to check our brain if it was already affected, we went to, to one of the biggest labs in Lagos. And just getting there, I started hearing people say, I've been here for 48 hours. Wow. I was like, what? So is this what I'm going to go through? I started pressing buttons to so see. So what, do, what does your solution do in this yes, case? Yes, so I will talk about Checker there. So um, launching Checker is um, simply helping people access lab services from the comfort of their homes. Mm -hmm. It means that you can consult a doctor. Mm -hmm. The doctor tells you, go do this test. You don't need to go physically to the lab anymore. They can anymore. come to you. Yes. We can send um, the medical team to take your blood samples or whatever sample required mm -hmm. for such test. And you get your results in 24 to 48 hours, depending mm -hmm. on the turnaround time for the test you're doing. Okay. So from there, um, the, um, the doctor can get the results. Yeah. They then send you medication. So you can have full digital health even without visiting um, um, the hospital That's or even fantastic. in oh, well, fantastic. The economics, however, how does it make, I mean, it's a medical sector, and I know that a lot of people, whether they like it or not, you have to, they have to get good health care and they, yeah. you have to pay for it. So I'm assuming that it is, um, it makes you very wealthy. Uh, yeah, it's profitable. Profit. Solving people's problems bring money. Okay, not, it's not an exploitation. You're not exploiting, no, no, you're no, providing no, no. a solution. I mean, so the gap is like apparently it or not. there. I can okay. give you an example. Yes, please. Um, you're full of examples. Aren't you? <laughs> telehealth companies today, um, during the wake of COVID, uh, mm -hmm. you see that a lot of telehealth companies started to yeah. spring. But regardless of um, those telehealth companies, the doctors will not be able to go further unless the patients go to the lab. Mm -hmm. So, what is digital in the healthcare that I consult? Mm -hmm. virtually, and I still have to step into a lab to mm -hmm. progress. Yeah. It makes, so pharmacies have started going digital, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hospitals have gone digital. Mm -hmm. What of laboratories? So that is the gap there. So with our solution, in the shortest time possible, we've been able to partner with a lot of telehealth companies, and pretty much these telehealth companies pay us Oh. To help, so they pay sample collection fees. Mm -hmm. They also pay for lab. So you're um, not just services. getting a, a patronage from, um, from patients. Directly. Patients, you're also partners. getting from partners in yes. hospitals Operate. and labs and all of that. Yes. Uh, do you also provide the labs with these uh, um, uh, um, uh, personnel as well sometimes? Or because I can imagine that their personnel are overwhelmed. So do you provide them yes, with personnel? Yes, we provide the personnel. So do you guys make rainfall? Because what else can't you do is my question. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to create, so the goal for us is to build Africa's first digital laboratory. And you're well on your um, way. Yeah, it's just like Kodal for banking, mm -hmm. we're doing checker for healthcare, right? Aye, for that's, that's very interesting. Such that regardless of whatever kind of test, mobile MRIs, mobile CT scan, you can do it from anywhere you are. Hospitals, how difficult was it to get people to jump aboard? Uh, did you just put it out there and people jumped on it, or did you have to do some sort of uh, marketing PR? Were, of course, there was a lot of PR. Where we started, we started by getting partners that understood, that knew that there was a gap. It was not difficult at all, because they were looking for how to get people mm -hmm. to do lab diagnosis from home, and there was nobody doing that at the mm -hmm. time. So once we sent in a proposal, they were like, wait, we've been waiting for this mm -hmm. all, all, all day long. Can, can we just Yes, so they jumped on it. And of course, they also get incentives for doing this. So it's a collaboration of, um, that is profitable to everyone in the ecosystem, the partners, 
the patients themselves, the hospitals, it makes the entire process seamless. And what about geography? How far do you guys reach? Um, currently, we're in Lagos. We're looking to scale to other states, um, Abuja, Ibadan, Port Harcourt. Then we're building a Pan-African solution. Mm. So um, we're looking to go um, to other African countries to mm. solve the same problem. And um, I would not say it's a shock you, but other countries have this problem. A friend yeah. of mine told me of how a, 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 a um, company doing the same thing in Dubai made it seamless for them to do COVID tests. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, exactly. To come. I was, so I was actually coming the, there. the problem is global. Yeah. So looking at what we are doing, we are not doing it just for So Nigeria. you've come this far only since when? Since what, when did this uh, project this begin? This project started, in, we started building it in January. In January. This is yeah. five months down the line, and yes. you guys have come this far already. Yes. So I, I, I'm thinking, I'm trying to imagine how far you go at the end of the year or in two years or five years. That's, that's going to be You're amazing. You're building man. a unicorn for healthcare. Exactly. They're <laughs> hard to find, but when you do find it, hold on to that horn. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> We've also got great food here that you should also hold on to.